Welcome to the ITM Podcast. This is episode 212 of the ITM Podcast, the official Boston Red Sox podcast of the CLNS Media Network, brought to you by PrizeFix, the exclusive daily fantasy partner of the CLNS Media Network, and by Game Time, the best place to buy tickets online, sports, concerts, events, the farmer's market, I think they got tickets to all sorts of stuff. Lowest price is guaranteed at game time. And the Boston Red Sox, you'll never believe this, Scott. They played four games, right? Four of them. They won two, and the other two they lost. Oh. Send off the balloons. Check us out on YouTube. Uh, the 500, they're still 500. Exactly what we said was going to happen, happened. They split the four-game series. Uh, and now uh, they they remain 500 at 30 and 30. My name's Jacob Honey. That's Scott Neville. How you doing? Just I'm fine. Yeah, I feel like that's uh, the exact take you should have when you your entire life is dedicated to covering the Boston Red Sox. It's like it's fine. It's, it's like good. Would you say Not perfectly terrible. balanced? Perfectly average? Yeah, it's it's yeah, right down the middle. Like you'd prefer it to be better, but like certainly, I guess it could be worse. Like you see people around you who have it worse, so you feel like you can't really complain. I feel like I'm in the middle of the pack, right in the middle of the pack. Yeah, 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 mm-hmm. yeah. Like there's people doing way better than you, and you're like, oh man, I remember when I I was like that, and then yeah. other people that you're like, well, at least we're not them. But then it hits mm-hmm. you, and you're like, but this has been like a lot of average, and, and like, you know what that's else? Just really- as bad as a spill doing bad. What? It really sucks too that like, as we've talked about on the show, I also have the Cardinals site among others, right. but those are the two I focus on, right? So they there was a point first of all where uh, there was a day where the Red Sox were twenty eight twenty eight and the Cardinals were twenty seven and twenty seven, and I was like, my right. life sucks because if you've ever heard in in, in media, uh, you either want a really bad or a really good team that gives you a lot to talk about. Mm-hmm. This this is it's hard to write about the trade deadline when you're like. I don't know. They'll probably like kind of half-ass it because like that's kind of the right move. Uh, so like, yeah, like they won't trade away like years like of team control players that are like actually like we're not worried about like losing Duran like we would if it was like blow it up time, uh, mm. or Willier or something, but like which would generate attention. But we're also not going to acquire players that matter. So that's fun. But the thing that sucks extra about this is. Just because we're in the better league and the best division by a lot, 30 and 30, like, totally sucks. The Cardinals Mm -hmm. right now are 28 and 29. Do you know their position within the – like, where they're – take a stab where they're at. Um, What are they – were they, like, three games out of the wild card? Nope, nope. They'd be in the playoffs right now. Wow. They have the As a sub-500 team? That's correct. And they're in second place in their division. Holy shit. And they're four games back, I think. Let's see. Is that right? Four games back? Uh, nope. Okay, seven. That was very wrong. But they're, uh, they're seven, seven games back of first place, but they are in a wildcard spot at 28-29, which means if they're, they're 500 in a month from now, mm-hmm. they're buying. And for us, if we were five games over 500, I don't know. I don't know why you would. I wouldn't if I was Breslow because this team stinks. <clears throat> the team's underperforming, dude. They don't stink. The, all the right pieces are there. There's a lot of talent. They're underperforming. Have you heard this? The team's heard president and CEO the- told me this. So yeah. you know what's funny? When you just mentioned games back, I had to go and look at the standings to see how many games back the Red Sox are because that thought hasn't fucking crossed oh. my mind, dude. Yeah, I haven't for a second yeah. been like, how many games back are they in the division? Like, don't check it. Well, what one? It's you know June third. Like you're, it's only now kind of approaching. Check the standings time. Like a lot of people will say, like All Star break. Some people say Fourth of July. Like that's like around the time you start to check. But you still, you know, I think we all like yes check anyway. You know. But do you think if you were a Yankees or uh, Yankees or Orioles fan, don't you think you'd be like looking at it pretty much daily? I feel like before yes. every podcast, we'd be looking at the games back for sure from yes. the jump. 
But I feel like we started seven games back, and we're now eleven. Do you know and how half. far back they are right now? Eleven and a half. I just I'm looking oh. at it. Yeah, I just I just looked at it too, and it was one of those things when I pulled it up. I was like, oh, I'll see the number, and it will jog my memory. No, this is the first time I've seen this. <laughs> I had yeah. I I couldn't have placed a guess. Uh, I know well, because we're Yankees staying are... five hundred, which means we're just far like going further down and down. Like it's not you would think yeah. five hundred would keep you fine like in the same spot but no because the other teams are way better than 500 and just building a more and more of a lead 10 games over 500 20 games over 500 like that's what's going to happen yeah and they, and they just keep winning more games than they're losing and, they, and the red sox yeah. do this awesome thing where they, they even they keep them exactly even yeah it makes you think they're same a few pieces away I think they're all there. Sam Kennedy agrees. Um, Sam Kennedy said some more dumb shit this week in case you missed that. Uh, let's talk about that really quick. Sam Kennedy, thanks for coming on the program uh, twice on the show. Maybe once. Who knows? Doesn't matter. Uh, ITM alum Sam Kennedy said some more dumb wasn't shit. Wasn't there. Uh, here, I wasn't there. You were there? No, I wasn't there. You, you might, I might there. have been. I, I might have been for one of them at least a part. Of, I think I was a part of the show for one of them, but I wasn't, you know. I don't know. At that point, I didn't really pay attention to what you guys do. I didn't listen to this yeah. crap. No. no. No, why would you? Uh, here's here's the, Sam Kennedy's quotes. Quote, On the other hand, our bats have gone quiet at the wrong time. Our defense has not been where it needs to be. And, of course, we've suffered the loss of some guys like Trevor Story and Tristan Cassis and Tyler O'Neill now going down. So that's not an excuse. It's on us to stay healthy. That's part of competing. We're right at the 500 mark here. Uh, got 100 plus games to go. So we need to get hot. We need to continue to pitch the way we have and start getting guys on base and scoring more runs. I, I, I end quote real quick. Facts. Pause quote. G great analysis. Mm. Uh, quote, but I don't think we've overperformed. I think if anything, we've underperformed just given the talent and the competitiveness in that clubhouse. End quote. Now, Scott, if I may, may I? Uh, sure. Thank you. What you can't fucking do is go into a year and say, we don't, we're not going to acquire anybody, anybody more. We, we believe in these guys and we're willing to take a gamble on the guys that are in there, that th this is a major league caliber club. I know it doesn't look like it to, to you or frankly to me or to fucking anyone. It doesn't look like a major league club, but we're going to take a gamble. And we're going to say that they are. And then point the finger at those guys and say, no, it's their fault because I gambled on them. And it turns out that they're not like a major league cal. Well, they're a perfectly average major league caliber team. And I gambled that they would be more than that. So it's on them that they haven't. It's on this damn slot machine. I keep pressing the button, and it's not giving me more money. We, we can't be doing that, Sam. That doesn't make a whole mess of sense now, does it? Um, the other thing in here that, that woo, I could fight God reading is uh, that's not an excuse. It's on us to stay healthy. I know he's probably just saying shit and I know how these interviews go and like, they just, they, you just say words and it, then you see them written down. You go, Oh man, did I say that? <sighs> that there's already a, a quote that everybody uses and it's, it's something along the lines of like injuries happen. Injuries are part of the game. Something like that. It's on us to stay healthy is it's not us, dude. It's them. That's what you mean. What you're saying is it's on the guys to stay on the field. Um, so we're, we're wow, ragging on. on, you don't, is want that Sam not Kennedy. exactly what he's saying? Well, no, what I'm saying is if, if Sam Kennedy pulls a hamstring, I'm sure there's going to be some sort of implications on the results of the wins and loss column. You don't think that matters? He said us no. because he thinks if, I mean, if he loses a hammy, better, better, I mean, hit, better Vaughn than him. Who knows what could happen if the Sox lose Sam? That that could mm -hmm. that could spell disaster. So maybe that's why Injury. he is lumping himself in because he knows it's on him to keep himself healthy. Uh, but he's also putting it on the fucking hurt player. Like, 
I don't understand how you with a straight face say, yeah, it's on these rookies and these unproven guys and these guys claimed off waivers and shit uh, that they're not winning more games. That's on them. And then the guys who are good, who are hurt, that's on them. They should stay healthy. Um, and our pitchers who suddenly improve to being like 10 times as good as they've ever been, that's not overperforming. They just need to keep doing that. That's a, that's a whole lot of blame pie that you're not really taking a slice of yourself there, Samuel. That's a whole lot of, well, this guy should do this, and this guy should do that, and that guy should do this. And I think it's important. This is a life lesson, okay? Because I'm, I'm, you look up to me as like a father figure, right? You, I mean, age wise, that makes sense, but yeah, so mm, like a like I a big just, brother, in, just just in the sense of like, there's a massive age gap, yes, and, right, and well, a small age gap, and the fact that like I'm I'm insp- I inspire you, you want to be like me, and like I've I'm worldly, I've well, seen the world, I know things, and like you want to learn from me and be like me, so I'll I'll, I'll instill this on you. There's a there's I, a yeah, really there's a really like important that. thing you got to do sometimes. Um, people call it reading the room, um, but there's. But what I think everybody means by that, if you were to break that down a little bit, is it's important to take an assessment of of yourself and the people around you, the, the people who are in the room with you, and say, am I the loudest voice in this room right now? And are these do these people agree with what I'm saying? Or am I am I a really loud minority voice right now? Uh, and had Sam taken that second, I think he would have found himself in the latter category. Uh, no, no one's saying this, Sam. No one's saying this shit. This is just you, man. Yeah, but it's not like he doesn't, I mean, his job is to read the fan base on a day-to-day basis. Like, he can't be surprised when he says some of the dumbest things ever and then those outcomes, like, that's, of course, that's going to happen when you, you know, people are going to get upset when you say some stupid shit like that and you blame the team and you don't take any accountability for just building a shitty roster that you knew was going to be shitty where with, with a, a team that had really no upside like this was the best case scenario you could argue was this because yes there were injuries but imagine if in the season or at the beginning of the season spring training if we were like okay what would make this roster decent well will your abreu is going to have to be like a premier hitter, like a rookie of the mm-hmm. year candidate. Mm-hmm. And then we're going to need both Hulk and Crawford to not only perform in that like legitimate Cy Young conversation, more, more Tanner now than, than Cutter, but be legitimate frontline starters and, and not just like in terms of ERA, but also put the innings up. Like we're also going to need them to pitch a lot. And then we're going to have to hit on some random asshole like Cooper Chriswell because we know Whitlock's going to get hurt. And now he's, you know, is what he is. Uh, and, and that's pretty much what it would have taken. Oh, and probably, like, Rafael is going to have to be as good as advertised defensively and then somehow lead the team in RBIs despite hitting 200. Like, that's what it took to get to 500. Ref Snyder's going to have to start hitting righties. And, and all we did those all fucking that. ifs. Yeah. Yeah, what they all checked. Work? Von Grisham. Von Grisham. At Grissom? Grissom. Gris. Gris. Yeah. I get people get pissed off. I get DMs about that. Um, he he's the only one that's been like a complete stinker in terms of performance, and he's been hurt three times since that trade. Two of them were in spring training, but still, uh, been one carried over of those two. But yeah, the, the things that like haven't worked out is like obviously injuries. Mm-hmm. Yoshida didn't do great but then you look at the stats again you're like okay he's maybe 10 percent worse than than he was last year uh before he mm-hmm. got hurt and people just overreacted for no reason what like what was the what was the expectation that every single one of these get the david hamilton was going to be a 330 hitter that emmanuel valdez was going to put up five defensive runs saved i mean he had a interesting game this series but you know what was what were we what did we miss what what did we miss in our analysis that breslow and kennedy and henry saw that this team was supposed to be 10 games over 500 right now. Yeah. Like where, where else would you have wanted something to like, what, what, what didn't click, which, which leg right. of this parlay didn't I guess, cash. 
I guess if everyone said 100, like there were no IL stints and mm-hmm. all of like Pavetta was been as good as he was and Cutter and, and everyone and like the pitching staff in general was is as good as it is right now. And you had Casas and Trevor Story and Story came back to Colorado all-star form. You're right. Maybe it would be five games over 500, maybe more. Maybe. You're asking for a lot. It is. And I think to your point too, like if you, you like rewind to spring training and you're making this list of all the things that you want or that need to go right. Right. If you also told that, you know, March version of yourself, 60 games in they're 30 and 30. Like, are you disappointed? Like, are you upset? Are you shocked? I feel like I would be like, yeah, okay. All right. Okay. That's sounds about right. That's fine. Yeah, and and the one thing I tell you, like, you know, 78 wins is basically 500, and that's been last place in the AL East for two years. Um, I will say, if you told me that on June 3rd, they were in third place, I'd be elated by that. I'd be like, that is probably their ceiling, because you know first and second was out of the question. Like, that was Mm -hmm. never going to happen. Even Not even because you can't, like, obviously Baltimore has cemented themselves. Not even because Baltimore and New York are like, you'd never pass them. It's just because, you know, with this team, it could never be a second-place team in the AL East as currently constructed. It's just, I don't know. Like, we need to move to the Central. We need to get, maybe we put, maybe we switch Worcester and and Mm -hmm. Boston, and we say we're a Central team now. Whereas we're we're out there now, we're moving as far. You're saying if we move we the team to Worcester, like that's far enough west to qualify for being well, a central just, team. Th- that's as probably not as far as we get. Like I don't even know what's the most west point in Massachusetts. I don't. I don't care. think anyone's ever been out there. No one's certainly not. I mean, you'd have to take you'd have to travel by cow, I think. But uh, uh. we could try and go to the end. It is. It's a pretty long state. We could get over there, I guess. Mm-hmm. But then how do you get you, – you can't even get the players over there. You can't travel out of it. There's no way they have planes no. over there. So Worcester, I was going to say there's no roads over there, I don't think. So right. I don't know how we would really get over there. Uh, snowshoe and, you know, or something? Yeah, I know. It's probably snowing there now. Who knows? Um, but Nobody does. Yeah, so I'm just saying maybe we just make a pitch for the Central because that's how we want to play. That's Because John Henry would love to own an, an NL Central team right now. Yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know how long this system sticks around with. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Because <clears throat> getting into the postseason as a central team feels like a participation trophy. It really does. It feels like. It's so yeah, nice. you could. You guys can get into. You can have. You can send one of your teams. Come on, send the Tigers. That'd be. That'd be cute. Yeah, they can play a couple of games here. Before they go back home, like that's it. That's all it is. Um, with like an occasional exception, sure. But uh, yeah, I mean, the 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 East. It's like even if it wasn't the the O's and the Yankees on top of the division right now, like the Jays and the Rays would just put it together, and you know right. what I mean. It's just like a that's like somebody I mean. like, would. It wasn't a year where you're saying like like other than the Orioles. Yes, the Yankees, mm-hmm. I mean, you can say, you know, they added Soto and everything, but they also lost Garrett Cole and they were fourth place last year. Like, they were just as bad as us last year. So it wasn't like, I didn't go into the year being like, well, you're not going to get past these two teams. You have a chance of being the Rays and Blues. It was just, there's a lot of talent in this division, and third place is a pretty good standing. Now, 30 and 30, I would assume last year probably wasn't third place. I guarantee you, you know, 81 and 81 won't be third place. By the end, I still don't think. Maybe if they sell, I don't know. I also don't think we at this point. You know, it, you're if you're on pace for 500 before the deadline and you sell, you're not going to end 500. So we're not on a 78 win pace probably in realistic world. So I don't know. I don't like Just, living I feel in like, a realistic world. Yeah, well, the it, yeah, because it stinks because we're 500 and it's boring. Yeah. I've been living in 2018 world actually, to be honest with you. I'm wearing, look at this, I'm wearing, oh, you're wearing it right now? 2018 shirt right now. I got a 2018 hat. I don't have it on right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's in the other room. Went and bought a bunch of 2018 stuff. What hat are we looking at right now? Looks like a skull. This is a, a, a guy, his wearing skull, a wearing a hat. Um, New Orleans. Huh. New Orleans, uh, French Quarter. 
Yeah, I just got it at like a little tourist shop in the French Quarter in New Orleans. That's what they call it down there. You know, hey, you want to do, since like the team sucks, and we'll get to bullet points, but um, I have a dilemma about New Orleans that I have to figure out. Do you want to just figure that oh, one yeah? out real quick? Yeah, 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 okay. yeah. Let's figure that so, out. Yeah. So, so, mm-hmm. I have a friend that uh, works for me that lives in Texas, and he's coming back. Right. Uh, in late June, and it's gonna. It was supposed to be. Uh, I was like, we can go to the game when Xander returns to Fenway. Now Xander's uh, a dead man. Right. Now. RIP. So that takes less away. But then also, then a friend of mine offered. He said he, his company is throwing a a party that has a twenty five thousand dollar budget for this one party, this one night, right. in New Orleans that yeah. same weekend. And he's like, do you want to go? And I was like, absolutely, I do. And I forgot about the game. And now I'm like, oh, man, I told him I was going to go. But then I told him I was going to go to like that. The whole thing was like the Bogarts return. Right. And I'm like, that takes – it's it's not as important now. But also, it's the only time he's going to be around. I'll see him at the All-Star game because he lives in Texas. So mm-hmm. I'm just – which is like two weeks later. And I'm like, oh, man, I told him I was going to go to the game. But the, the game has become far less – intriguing and now i have mm-hmm. a, so a twenty five thousand dollar budget for this one night or this one party in new orleans right which yeah. means you probably don't pay for much at this party right not a cent no okay which means you have the extra gained capital to bring this friend of yours to new orleans on your dime you no, have no, 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 the freedom on. to yes you do to pack it's him up that, and, though. what he so he's coming he's not coming back to see me he's coming back to see his family he has a whole like he's He's coming back oh, here on those right. dates. Like, oh, and you feel what? You, you feel like, oh, I should still take him to Fenway Park with like the my fifteen dollar ticket. Yeah, well, no, it's not about like paying for his ticket. I don't think I'm paying for his ticket. It's just more like, hey, I agreed to go to the game with you. I pre- maybe I would have, and I probably would have because he works for me. But like, it was more just like, hey, man, like he's like, I'm I'm dying to get to Fenway while I'm there, and like, there's basically a scenario where. He's here for like 10 days, but they're on the road for like seven of them. And so, yeah. uh, and he has to go like part of it's like, uh, I think he might be going to New Hampshire or something for a weekend, some in the middle of this thing. And so, uh, yeah, I just, I told him I was going to do it. And then now I like, I went to the party that had a $5,000 budget with the same company. And it yeah. was pretty awesome. I can't even imagine if you throw now, go from Boston to New Orleans and add in 5X the budget. Yeah, let me tell you, I don't care. I don't care if this was like your dying brother. You go to New Orleans. You hear me? Yeah, you go yeah. to New Orleans. You go to uh, New Orleans. You drop this guy. I hope you should. You should you tell him. Would I understand? Yeah. Who's you? If I was this guy, mm-hmm. probably not. But it doesn't matter. Like, uh, tell him. Tell him to his face. Be like Facetime him and be like, dude, mm-hmm. I got an invite to something way cooler, and I'm gonna go. And I think that's what you do. You own it and you go. Okay. And uh, that's it. I could just show him this. Yeah, show him this. Sorry, dude. Scott's not coming. There you go. Also, also you're fired. Also, no, you're fired. But imagine. Dude. No, Sorry, but that'd imagine. be crazy. That'd, that'd be, be funny. Well, now his now he's like, holy crap. And now it's like, oh, I just now I just can't go to a game. Well, now For his job security. His job. Yeah. And then and I then, bet his job security uh, skyrockets. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because you probably feel bad. No, you should feel bad. And mm-hmm. you should, he should, you should have like a ton I mean, of- his job security was fine before. But now it's extra fine. Okay. You know whose job security isn't fine? Oh, I know where you're going with this and I like it. I, I hate it, but I like the transition. Uh, this guy who... Uh, his contract's up at the end of the year. He manages the Boston Red Sox. His name's Alex Cora. Mm -hmm. Um, And the last we heard from him about his contract and working here and uh, managing the old Bo Sox, as we all call them, uh, was that like, oh, yeah, you know, we're talking. Uh, Alex Cora made it clear this week. uh, He told the media that he uh, does not plan to discuss his future or an extension with the Red Sox until after the season. But you got to thank you, Alex Cora. Thank you for uh, 2018. Thanks for your time here. Mm-hmm. Oh, big time! You gotta, you, you gotta him. like. We, we we got. I mean, you gotta like what what uh, Sam Kennedy's already starting the scapegoat conversation in June. That's pretty good. 
Uh, mm-hmm. We didn't even want him. You know, we right. think he wasn't the right fit for us. Look at his. He wasn't bringing the best out of the players. Look at what. Look at his record since 2018. Since mm-hmm. we stopped giving him help. Not good. Nope. I, I, he, and honestly, team, he's a cheater. They handed anyway. him. They hit. He is always has been. They yeah. handed him a World Series contending roster this year, and he has him 500. Yeah. I mean, what? You can't get the most out of David Hamilton? Dom, you get a Dom Smith, Garrett Cooper platoon, and you can't make that work? <laughs> we got you a lefty and a righty. What's your problem? We got both sides we'll of the plate. We'll call Bob up again if you really need him. Yeah. I mean, because we traded sale, but we got a guy that can't hit or stay healthy. So, no, I do think that was a fine trade in five years. But I think we'll look back. Right, 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 but, right. But, but for, you for, can't blame the- this year. This year, though, what you did was you traded – you traded a, uh, what's now a Cy Young candidate, another one, for uh, a guy that both sucks and can't be healthy. And then you replaced mm-hmm. him with – you just keep moving Rafael around and be like, you're our everyday shortstop. And then, oh, Tyler and Nielsen, you're our everyday center fielder until he comes back. Except now, okay, we're going to use we're gonna use David Hamilton every day. We're going to use Romy. Oh, no, he pulled something. Okay, well, never mind. We'll just go with Valdez, and we'll bring up two corner infielders, and now we have four first basemen. So let's just get the most set. Figure it out. We're Why is this West team Brooklyn underperforming, right dude? What's going on here? We're doing, we've given you four first basemen. You can't get production at first base? <laughs> dude, we just keep giving you first base. We have so many infielders for you, man. Valdez. We gave you Pablo at the beginning of the year. We traded him for cash because we didn't need depth. We wanted cash. Yep. So. Of course, so fucking gone. Thanks so much for everything, Alex. Um, I I'll be kind of mad at no him. For sucking. Right. His fault. Do I, Are we scapegoating him too? I don't really want to scapegoat him. I feel like it's the sarcasm here is a little evident. I did. I sense more sarcasm here than, than with Sam Kennedy. Sure. Oh, sure. Did we hear him say it? Who? Like, we, I know we saw the transcription, but did you hear Sam Kennedy say it? No. Because maybe he was like, oh, well, you know, I mean, he couldn't get anything out of David Hamilton, you know? So maybe if he said it like that, you'd be like, oh, he's saying that the players suck. It's not cool. I mean, I mean, he didn't like, even if he mention. Was like, <laughs> if he was like, you know, we got him as much help as we could, he'd be like, <laughs> oh, he's, he's, he's screwing around, you know? He's just joking. Yeah, maybe okay, let me find the quote. Maybe Yeah, try it that way. All right, all right. Um I don't think we've overperformed. I think if anything, we've underperformed. Just given the the talent in the clubhouse. Is that good? Is that it? It's I think I think what the podcast listeners are missing, there was a lot of facial expressions. There was a lot of facial. There. Let me try it again. Mm-hmm. Um You've run it. It, we've underperformed just given the talent in that clubhouse. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay. Um, I can do this. I made a, I was an actor last week. I made a video yep. last week. Uh, well, say it again. Say the line again. We've underperformed just given the talent in that clubhouse. Um, can I ad lib a little bit on this one or do I have to say it the way That's he said the quote. it? That's the quote. <sighs> I, I See, we're trying to give Sam an out here. We're trying to find I know, a tone I I in one. which this yeah. quote could be okay. Like, uh, like for the week, like I would do it to be like, oh man, I mean, Hamilton, Dom Smith, Cooper, if any, if anything, we've underperformed, you know, that's how I would do it. But like with the actual text, it's making it harder. It's with hard, right? It's kind of hard to find yeah. a place where yeah. uh, you can make an excuse for Sam Kennedy's dumbass comments, blaming the players when... Uh, he sits in that front office and they, they, uh, you know, they didn't do uh Jack diddly shit all year, all off season. And then that's uh, not said true. They, they were going to, they got a bunch of players that already were rehabbing Tommy John surgery. So that's a great rephrase. point. Actually, I'm so sorry. They got a whole bunch of guys that can't play ball for many reasons, for a bunch of reasons, a bunch, any way you want to use that phrase. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's how we're going to use it. Uh, if you want to play, though, I got a great game for you, uh, and you can get in on the action with our good friends over at Prize Picks. With Prize Picks, you could turn ten dollars into a thousand dollars in a single game watching your favorite sports this summer. 
You can make a prize picks lineup in as little as 60 seconds. You just need to pick more or pick less on two to six player stat projections and you're locked in. When the finals are over, the hoops action doesn't stop on prize picks. Women's basketball is just getting started. With young stars like Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese looking to make names for themselves, alongside greats like Brianna Stewart and Asia Wilson, you could win up to 100 times your cash watching them ball out. Prize picks is so easy to use, dude, and I got to be honest, I've kind of been making bank over there. This week on Prize Picks, I'm selecting Caitlin Clark for more than three and a half three pointers made and Brianna Stewart for more than 23 points. So download the app today and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to a hundred dollars. That's code CLNS for a first match deposit up to one hundred dollars. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Prize picks. Thanks to Prize Picks. So we touched on this a little bit already, but I tweeted about the Sox being 500 and again because they've done it a whole bunch of times. They they were. Uh, do I want to run through it all? Do I have it handy? I don't know if I do, but uh, they've they've been 500 a whole mess of times, uh, and and they they continue to do it over and over and over again. Um, and the general consensus in the replies to this one tweet, anyway, was like, you know what? I would take an 81 win season. I'd take it. And like you said, the past two years, 78 wins. Mm. I think it, we might be reaching the point in this because this season, this season's been the tipping point. It always has been like even before it happened, it was looked at as like, this is going to be the one where like you either lose fans permanently or you like you keep them from falling off the, the ledge. And some some fans leapt during the off season, some during spring training. And like, as the year is going on, more people just falling off the ledge. But the people who are sticking around, the people who are clinging on are saying, I think they're moving the bar, dude. That's what I'm getting at. I think the bar is actually moved. I think that the perennial postseason socks is just genuinely no longer the bar. I think it is just, I would enjoy them being a truly 500 team and people pretty earnestly were like, I would take that. Hate to hear it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, so I tell you what, Joey, bad for business, bad for business. Not good. Horrible. I'm thinking I got my business cap on. It's yep. Invisible. Put it on. Put it on. I just don't have a hat here, man. No, you don't seem like a hat guy. No, I can't. I have too no. good a hair. Pfft. Yeah. Needs to get cut, though. Yeah, Big me time. too. Look at this. This is just nothing. Yeah, you got to get this. This is trim. nothing. Yeah. Uh, but Shouldn't it's shave not. My head. It's, I tell you what, I, uh, you know, mm. not a lot of people in those seats and no. not the engagement. You know, and like I said, it's narrative based. The Cardinals site is is booming because they went from fifth to second fast and they mm -hmm. went on this huge win streak. And for them, 500 gives you a chance. That's not the case here. We're in too good of a division. The expectations here are higher than in St. Louis. Frankly, the expectations to spend are much higher here than in St. Louis. And so. Yeah, you're right. It's probably, I think, because you have the only people that are left, I think to your point, is the people that are like prospects. They like baseball savant. They believe in, they want the, the Yale nerd to make the trade for the double-A guy that, you know, the David, they trade Schreiber for Sandlin, and in two to three years, you get a shot at a four or five starter. And that's the kind of people that you've, You've, you like the people, like you've kept those kind of diehards. And those are the ones saying, Heim was going to figure it out. He didn't need more money. He just needed to keep building up the farm system for decades and decades. And I don't think, I think there's a middle ground there. And there's no reason why it's one or the other. I don't know why people take the stance of you either have to spend a lot of money or build up the farm system. You absolutely can do both. Uh, but yeah, I think that's why that feels that way. I think it's because of the people that are left are the people that are willing to just, they're just watching anyway. That's just yeah. their sport. 100%. 100%. And I, 
I think, although this is like the tipping point year, I think next year is the, it has to end year. And I think if it truly is on the back of these three youngsters, and if it's truly just ride the prospects to the promised land, uh, then I think you have a pretty big, a pretty big mutiny on your hands because then I think the people who are, who are all about that, you know, back end starter two, three years down the line, they start to learn that like those returns are not guaranteed. Uh, and, uh, it's, it's fun to project prospects, but zero people on the planet can do it. Like zero people can do it. Uh, it's like way more reliant on an individual human being than it is on like your ability to like track their bat speed and launch angle at the age of 19 and how that's going to translate to when they're 27. Uh, it, I, I think once like that gets figured out and then next year it's like, they're still not spending the guys are here and they're not doing anything about it other than just crossing their fingers and hope that, you know, the park fills up. Then I think that's, that's the bigger mutiny. I think next, I think 2025 is the year where, um, maybe things get a little louder in the fan base for a change if something does, but I don't even know if it does. Who knows? Who knows? Because the thing is, Scott, this is stupid poisoned brain. I'm going to say it. If they told me full throttle again, I'd fucking buy it. I would believe it. If they told mm. me they're like, this offseason, this one's full throttle, I'd be like, here we fucking go, baby. Here we go. Did you hear? Did you hear what Tom Werner said? Man of his word. Say? No, I'm saying if he said full throttle, oh. you'd be like, are we serious? See, I was, I was ready to hear it right now. I'm like, wait, wait, wait. Did right. he? Did I miss it? No, no, you certainly didn't. I don't think he'll be talking ever again. <laughs> no, I would. Im- yeah, I can't imagine. I mean, John Henry might have him in a cage somewhere right now with with a gun pointed at him. I, I can't believe he no. did. That was like, hey, what's the worst thing we could do right now? Like, mm-hmm. let's spend it. Like, people are going to be pissed, pissed when we don't spend money. Mm-hmm. What if we just you don't be funny. What if we just told them we were going to? <laughs> just to raise that bar even further. The expectation is high. What if we just guaranteed spending and then didn't? Well, and then and then when people get upset about it, we just be like, I don't know why you're so upset. I just meant by full throttle, we're going to scout hard. We're going to do our due diligence. We're going to try just as hard as anyone else from a operational perspective. You know, like we're just going to we have just as much data as those guys do. We just choose not to use it. That's the difference. There are a lot of different fuck yous in the world. And I mean, literally like tones in which you can use that, that poignant little phrase to, mm. to really hit somebody. Right. But that, what Tom Warner did earned the biggest, the biggest one of these fuck yous. He earned a fuck you. It's like a, what are you talking about? Are you kidding? Like, you want to pull the wool over our eyes like that? Anyway, I'm not sitting here trying to recount, recant, whatever. the Relive a horrible offseason. But 60 games into the year, 500, everybody's hurt. Uh, manager probably not coming back. Uh, team CEO blaming the players. I think, I think it's all right to be a little pissy right now. Because uh, mm. if you're listening to this and you're expecting us to, like, I don't know, be stoked about a split, I would... I would ask you why you thought that. Why did you think that that was going to be the case? Uh, now, th- this series, let's talk about this series because we're going to break this down pitch by fucking pitch. Uh, mm. That's a that's a lie. Jamie Westbrook, we're going to jump to the last game. Uh, Jamie oh, Westbrook. Last, okay. End uh, of the last he, game. Yep. Ninth inning, game four. Uh, Jamie Westbrook makes his major league debut in a moment that is uh, obnoxiously big. Uh, could win mm. a series... Uh, could put the team above 500, uh, walk-off potential, tie game, two out, uh, two on, uh, bottom of the ninth. Um, what do we, what, what, silly, right? Like a little silly? Like, is that Can a I little silly? Yeah, say it. I loved it. And here, here's why. Here's why. Yeah. Who gives a shit if they win that game, right? Like, yeah. here's the yeah. thing. That's where I'm at. Who cares? But, but we still talk about 
Daniel Nava's first pitch grand slam. Yeah. And it's like that would that said it that would have been like, man, that year sucked, but that moment was awesome. I was thinking when he was up, that reminded me of this was the only moment this year where I where I thought about when um Alex Verdugo hit the walk off and then just started dropping F bombs all over the place on Nesson. And we hopped yeah. on a live episode on, on like we did like an IG live with like I think Jared was even on it. And then we yeah. and then we and then we sold shirts um about whatever his quote was. Um Please that was the first fair. You, right. That was the first moment where I was like, if he does it here, that's that level of like you'll remember that about this season if you remember anything. Yeah. And at this point, that's all I'm shooting for. As far as win probability, I don't know. I don't even understand, like, who's left. I didn't even, like, I think of it. I'm surprised they put him in a major league right field. I'm very surprised they put him in the biggest right field in the major leagues for a guy who's in Rafael Devers shape. I know he has versatility. But he's a third first baseman. Like, he's a corner infielder. He's a That's fifth yeah. third baseman. Mind fifth you that in the minors. In the, yes. But mind you, in the minors, Emmanuel Valdez played everywhere. Mm-hmm. That's because they just screw around down there and see what works. See what sticks. Yeah. And I don't think Jamie Westbrook expected to be playing right field after. That was honestly almost more asinine than what they did to him with the bases loaded in two out. Or one out, whatever it was. It's like Alex Cora saw an opportunity for something that would be pretty cool. And he's like, yeah, yeah you know what? That'd be pretty sick, right? I'm gonna He do also it. has four first basemen to wield for. It was it was the him or Dahlbeck. Who would you rather honestly genuinely have in them? Wasn't in- Will your do up? Yeah, but I would have I would assume oh, do you think that was a because I always assumed that was because he fell earlier, which was hilarious, by the way. Such a Red Sox moment. Yeah. But he did come back after, and I was like, maybe mm-hmm. it like swell up. I didn't even consider the fact that this was a lefty righty thing, and you're so right. Yeah, that's and how in I, my that's head, I was I like, thought. he was a. That's a. Okay. Yeah, I was still like, pissed. is he pulling still the funny? front runner still for funny? rookie of the year? Equally more funny, but wow, that is a commitment to platooning. I mean, that is a level of that is a Tampa Bay Rays level platoon job. It's it's insane. It's but I don't know how to feel about it because I want to respect it and I want to be like, you know what? The wins and losses don't matter. And he just saw an opportunity for a cool moment and said, you know what? Fuck it. Put him out there. Because yeah. it'd be sweet if he did something. Uh and he did he did know. a neutral. Yeah, he got on base. He walked. Yeah. Yeah, that was Connor a neutral. Wong. Connor Wong, you know, swinging at pitches. I don't know what he's thinking, but he had it pretty far. Yeah, but it, I wouldn't have swung the bat. That's what I'm personally. Yeah, that's no, kind of that would be that would be my approach every time. Is it because he couldn't throw a strike? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was yep. why I would probably take him. But and at the same bases time, were loaded, so damage. like a winning run, he could walk in the winning run. Also, yeah, because I heard uh, Jim Rice defending him by being like, "I'm the most dangerous man on the planet with a bat in my hand, and I could kill you." Like every time Jim Rice and Papelbon get on the post game show, they just argue about what would happen if they face each other. But then I was just sitting there like, yeah, Jim, you're the greatest player of all time. Everyone thinks that, of course. But statistical probability, if you're great, the pitcher's going to win 70% of the time. Right. So maybe you just hope he makes one mistake. They they actually get heated with each other. They have the competitive thing. They had to genuinely, like, Palpabon had to, like, do, like, one of those, like, all right, let's move on. Like, he he couldn't, they had to to stop they had to stop. Yeah. That. Pellerin was like, do you guys want to, okay, we can move on from this. Like, okay. I just asked you like, what, what do you guys think about this move? And like, well, I yeah. would have done this. I would have done that. Yeah. It, it went from, would you have taken that pitch? And Jim Rice took it as like, I'm the baddest around. So yes, I would have swung the, I would have swung two bats in that situation is what I would have <laughs> done. I, and, and then, and, and guess what, Pap? It would have it would have been off you because you suck. And then like I don't know why they feel the need to do that every time. I don't but know. it always becomes what would have happened if these two face each other. The only other thing worth noting from uh from that game was uh the replay thing. If we're gonna have a replay, we don't need to I don't know I don't know why we're I, what the fuck are you guys doing? 
uh, like the clearest safe call of all time. Uh, call stood, stayed out. Uh, what they should do, they should just trust the manager who asks for a replay, like based on how quickly they 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 ask. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, because they cut to Cora, and usually the first time they cut to Cora, he's looking over his shoulder, and yeah. he'll get the thumbs up from phone guy, and then he'll go, yeah, take a peek. Yeah, take a peek. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this time they cut over to Cora, and he was already, you know, hands on the ears, already like, yeah, no, take a look at that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they should have just been like, oh, that was quick. He's probably safe. Uh, instead, they looked at it for about seven minutes and then decided to still call uh, him out, which, um, or, or call him, sorry, call him safe uh, with what he didn't touch the bag. So that was fun. Uh, do you have anything else game wise on this series whatsoever? Uh, Devers, uh, not Devers. I always, now I'm going to keep doing, oh, Devers did make an incredible play. Maybe the best of his career. Uh, I was going to yes. say Rafaela, but I always do. They now are in my, they got me in a, I mean, right. all tied up. Rafael, Rafael, they got to, someone's got to handle that. Um, another one of those Superman catches for Rafael. Uh, I was actually at game three. Oh yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. It was, Ooh. um, Have well, a good no, time. It's, yeah, I did. Nice. Fred Tim, uh, to be fair, it, that was a Saturday game. I right. got texted ex- exactly 1240 AM the previous, previous night. That was yep. like, did you want to go to the game tomorrow? And he has season tickets. So he was like, mm. I got one ticket. So I was like, yeah, I guess. Nice. That's cool. You want to hear something messed up? I know you're yeah. upset right now. but like, No, we I'm can, not. First of all, go ahead. It's just, well, okay, well, first of all, we couldn't, um, like, there was no room for you. Like, we would have had to not Oh, sit was it sold out? No, oh no, uh, not even a little bit. But I'm saying you could have gotten the building, but you couldn't have got yeah. like to sit with us. Did you sit for the game? You sat in yeah, your seats yeah, and watched no. the game. You did you really? Had, yeah, we had tick- No, I'm saying he had tickets. Like I didn't just do what we do. I didn't have credentials. Right. But you sat. You sat in a seat and watched the game. Yeah. I just never do that. I know you don't. Because I can't we, do the it. way our process. Got- but you tell me you wouldn't do it if you weren't credentialed. No, if I got tickets somewhere, no, I would probably like stand in the truly deck and then I'd walk really? over to the standing room on the first base side, then I'd walk over to the standing room on the third base side, and then I'd... that's interesting. Yeah. I can't I can't what am I gonna do? Sit still? I can't do it. Yep. And I'm and I'm so fucking huge, dude. I'm so jacked. Like I'm I, I can't know. fit in those fucking seats. I'm so big. That's not even close to true. That's like uh, it's tough. It's the part of being six six that sucks so much, you know? You wanna hear that okay, so that's all wrong. Um you wanna hear something that was really that really disappointing for me. Really, just yes. I, and I want we're going to bring this up. I'm sure. Sure. Um, so I have two people that I'm bringing along with us to the Savannah Bananas game that were just, I mean, so excited to go, and yeah. and really grateful. I thought, uh, seemingly through text and such and in person, uh, but that we were able to get them in because of the whole you know media thing and. Yeah. Uh, and she had four really, really good tickets Sunday, like really good, um, like behind home nice. plate, but like in the pavilion area where you get like a waiter, you know, like in that, like her, yeah. The Aura Club? Yes. Um, mm-hmm. And two people dropped out the day before. Mm. And she invited uh, Mots and yep. another kid in our group. Ah. And I said, wow. Uh Holy shit! Are you not going to the Savannah Bananas? I mean, oh my yeah. god, are you not? I mean, going? no shot now, right? Yeah. So I don't know what to do with that, but um, I was, I, I let her know. Good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We'll find somebody. Let us know. That's really my only credential recap. for the Bananas game. That was really like, my only. I, I was like, "Do you have any yeah. thoughts on these games?" And you're like, "Uh, I went to one, and the Savannah Bananas are coming up." What did you have? Anything better that was more game specific? Oh, no, Pavetta, eight, of, eight in a row is cool for Pavetta. Still lost, but that was cool. Yep. Almost got no hit. That was cool. That was less cool. Yep. There's a whole bunch of, like, really close pitching records that are going to come about that are like, man, you know, first Sox pitcher since Clemens to do this. First mm. Sox pitcher since Pedro to do that. Sox lose 
It's yeah. like the the exact opposite of the tungsten armo Doyle. So you're making a also, face. Do you know, are you not familiar with tungsten armo Doyle? Is that that's not the Otani thing, is it? That is the Otani thing, yeah. Okay. Like the yeah, Otani yeah, yeah. and Trout both home. Well, you said it was the opposite. Yeah. But it's the same. Yeah, because it's a, I'm saying it's the pitching side because like that oh. was always like, oh you know. okay. I just thought because we would we would it would end up being they do something awesome lose. So I thought it was the same. Yeah, so I guess I it's similar saying. to yeah, it's the yeah. same thing as the tungsten armor Doyle thing. Yeah. Okay, that's the only part that confused me. It, you made me think I didn't know what it was because you can you confused me with that. Well, but yeah, so those are my thoughts on the series. That's really my only takeaway. Well, if you want to go to the Savannah Bananas, uh, or if you want to go to Fenway. Uh, you can. They sell tickets. And the best place to go buy those tickets is on the Game Time app. The NBA Finals are here, and you guys know I'm a huge hoop head. Game Time makes getting NBA Finals tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to tip off. With killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying NBA tickets. You guys already know my favorite part, and it's seeing the view from your seat. What a feature. You want to know what your view is going to look like? Boom, Game Time's got you. Game Time also offers all in pricing to avoid any surprise fees, and with their lowest price guarantee, Game Time will credit 110% of the difference. Take the guesswork out of buying NBA Finals tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code CLNS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code CLNS for $20 off your first purchase. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. There is another series coming up, Scott. It's a two gamer against the Braves. I know you love that. You care about the history of of the Atlanta Braves formerly being the Boston Braves. Um, talk a little bit about how much that means to you, your family, um, and, and all those long texts that you sent me about it. Yeah, yeah, I just think that there's nothing more important than the early 1900s aspect of the Boston Red Sox. Uh, yeah. And... And and as much as others will say, well, every team plays everybody now, so why can't we just do it normal? Because the whole thing was to make sure that the Braves played the Red Sox. Mm -hmm. I, as well as the MLB, respectfully say, fuck that. You know, mm -hmm. let's just break it up into two games. Let's throw in some off days. Let's make it. Let's make a lot of travel out of this. Let's make this odd. Let's make it a two. Let's make it a two gamer. For no for no reason, even though and two two gamers, by the way, we're still mm -hmm. doing that. We play the Braves twice a year, but every other because we're well, really it's just a four game series. But we like to do this fun thing where we break it up. Um. So, yeah. I mean, what doesn't that sound cool? I think everybody loves it. I think everybody loves it. And I think you said it said it best. Let's make this odd. And yeah. uh, do I love an extra baby. off day every now and again? I guess came in handy for uh, us today, specifically. It did. Me. it did. It did. Enjoy this late episode. Uh, and, uh, yeah, that was your series preview. So thanks so much for listening, everybody. Uh, we appreciate you coming along. Now, wait, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. What? Hold on, hold on. First of oh, all, hinge match. Say, fun no, facts. Oh, first of all, I just want to say, um, that we haven't done a series MVP in three series and that's cause you have to win one. And it made me I was going to say, we, like, it's, we're not I forgetting think the next time. I think the next time we there, if they, if, if, if they do win another series, I think we might forget because we're on that level of a run right now. Uh, so that's the first thing I wanted to acknowledge. Uh, but also we got to do, and it'll be a quick one, but we got to do the pitching preview. Okay, folks, it is two games against the former Boston Braves, who are now the Atlanta Braves back in Boston. Game one is going to be Cutter Crawford versus Max Freed. Cutter Crawford's ERA touched three for the first time this year, now sitting at 329 after his last start in Baltimore. Saw him give up five runs in six innings. Max Freed is pretty good. He's allowed one earned run in his last 17 innings. His May ERA was 204, but with a 317 FIP. 
The last homer off him came on Cinco de Mayo. Uh-oh, Scott, do they get to him on holidays? Well, lucky for the Sox, Tuesday is National Cheese Day. And you'd cheddar believe the Sox are going to have a monster game against him. Or my name isn't Joe Marscapone. Game two. It's going to be Nick Pavetta versus Spencer Schwellenbach. Nick Pavetta is Canadian. He's also struggling. Five starts in May for a 5.55 ERA. Do you get that? Five starts in May, the fifth month, for a 5.55 ERA. Angel numbers, Scott, they're everywhere. They're all around us, which is funny because Pavetta is Italian for angel. No, it's not. But you believed it for a second there, probably. So that was probably cool. It's Italian for flute player. Spencer Schwellenbach is the Braves' number three prospect who just got called up. He made his debut against the Nats, going five innings and allowing three. Very nice of the Braves to wait for an easy part of their schedule to call him up. Dude, whatever. And that is going to do it for your very short pitching preview. I think the Red Sox win both of these games because that's what they do because we're down right now. They split with the Tigers. I think they win both games against the Braves. How about that? Here's a take. That's a take. First of all, first of all, I think Mm -hmm. the Pavetta flute, you know, switch up there was one of my favorite preview aspects so far that we've had. Thank you. Uh, I think that was one of my favorites. Uh, less less ferry talk than 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 back in the day for sure. Um, I haven't I haven't heard a ferry to be talked about in a quite some time. But that a was ferry. Good. Yeah, you used to talk about like you know like there was I think it was the first one that I was really a part of. He talked about how far of a ferry Pavetta was to right. the Mariners from his hometown in Canada, and uh, you know the switch ups to the high schools. You got a couple of things in there, but that was a good one. That was like that little that was new. Uh, Thanks. yeah. And you, you like the me. National Cheese Day stuff? Yeah, you know, it's just a good pitching preview, which is weird because I remember you told me that was an average pitching preview. I feel like you put more effort into that one than normal. Maybe it's just because there's two games, so it's a lot easier. Yeah, uh, I think I think I get caught up in wanting to actually preview these games instead of having fun oh. in the pitching preview. Which Ooh, yeah. I don't know why I'm doing that. If we're so. on a you know contender, maybe, but they don't. These games don't matter. Uh, we're here to I have think... fun, baby. Call me crazy. I think we might split. Yeah, you think? I actually am feeling. uh, I'm feeling a sweep, but not in the. Not by the Red Sox. Don't say that. I haven't called for a sweep yet. I'm very much feeling a sweep. To get swept. I think it's like the Sox to either split these or sweep them. I don't think these Sox get swept by by the Braves at home. I feel like these Sox are just like been loading for a while to just really punch in the gut even more. And I feel like this could be the big, like, like this could be the start of like a, you know, three and seven run where you're just like, all right, we hung in there as long as we could. It's a lot of negativity. We're going to have fun this series. Do you understand me? I would like to see them try. There we go. At the end of the day, that's all you need. Um, emptying our brain of thoughts, Joey and Scott. I don't have any. Uh, my brain's empty of thoughts. I I will say this. Uh, I rode a horse uh, this weekend. Oh, that's a close um, God. Uh, you go. You got anything to empty your brain of? Am I not wrong? Am I not wrong? No, you're totally that- right. That's why I'm handing it over to you for the yeah, other half. I got of one. Emptying our brain of thoughts with Joey and Scott. Scott? I got one. It came from the first game, which was like the we're just gonna make everybody in the Hall of Fame, Red Sox Hall of Fame an announcer today. Mm-hmm. And um I realized we we talked about Pat Bond earlier. Doesn't do a ton for me on the pre and post game show. But I don't know what maybe this is a jump, but I heard him talk in the in game uh interview there that was like a full inning and I I wrote that Papelbon could be the next Eck. I think he has that. It's now I know he's a closer to closer, but I really do think that if Eck was in the booth, he would say stuff he's not supposed to. I'm sure his vo- vocabulary would be different than the average human. And uh, you know, just the way he, some of the things he said in the game, I think he would be very blunt 
And, you know, he ended it by being like, all right, I'm going to go get a drink. Like, he's just so – that gave me that vibe of like, ooh, you don't know what he's going to say today for the first time in a while. You're not worried about you going off the rails. Palpamon, it's like, oh, man, they lose four in a row. He might start swearing. Like, I, I want yep. that. And I want him to, you know, start – I love having that, like, elite pitcher – in the in the room to talk break down certain situations and and also critique guys that stink like can you imagine Papabon with like a lefty that throws 88 that we're facing they give up like six earned runs how he would talk about that like you know Eck yeah. always did like the soft salad and all this stuff can you imagine the way Papabon would just talk in funny different Ripping various shirts, ways yeah. about how bad this player is in like in his way trying to be like respectful but it's actually just like unique ways to call a guy shitty I think well, I haven't really thought about that, but I think you make a great point. I think I you make an so absolutely bad. great point. I think <laughs> everybody talks about, you know, Monaco and who, right? Cause that's, that's like mm -hmm. the, the dream booth always starts with Mike Monaco. Of course. And I think we got a new comp. I think we got a new three man comp we're talking about here, which is Monaco Pap Lou, because I think any dream booth, oh. I always have to include Lou. That would fix the red. I tell you what, you give me that trio, fine within 81 games. I don't even care. 81 games yeah. is fine. I would rather you put Papabon in the booth for the rest of the season than they go out and get somebody that is good at baseball. And I wow. mean that. I really mean that because it's not going to solve – one player isn't going to solve any problems, but it the naps per game would go way down with Papabon in the booth. Oh, Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because, like, that was one of the worst things about losing Eck. And it's like, I, I almost feel like after Eck left, it was, like, very quick that we, I don't want to say forgot about him, but, like, moved on, you know? Mm. Like, people don't talk about him regularly right now, which, like, makes sense because yeah. he's, like, freshly out the door and, like, there's not a lot of nostalgia yet, you know, for, like, the mm -hmm. days of your, I'm sure, like, the old, like, you know, Jerry and Eck days, like, you know, yeah. you go you go far back and whatever, those those there's nostalgia for that, but um, people don't talk about Eck. And it's almost like, it feels like Eck erasure. Erasure? Is that the word? Ah, I don't, who who knows? Doesn't matter. Uh, it feels like Eck is being like erased, erased from our history books a little bit. And uh, I like forget sometimes how much fun it was to watch a game with Dennis Eckersley in the booth. Well, it's, it's the thing is, why do you, you watch at the end of the day, as much as wins and losses and you get into all the specifics and, and, and analytics and whatever, at the end of the day, this is a three hour TV show we watch every day. Yep. And right now the hosts of the TV show suck. They stink. One in particular, but right now, mainly the you're, main you're, host. Yeah. You're watching in a product for entertainment. And the only real way the broadcast can bring an element that's positive is by having good announcers. So your general happiness watching the game could improve 10, 20% with a much better booth with the same exact roster. Because it's not all about... It, it's very much heavily based on the performance of the game. But, I mean, that, you know, you get, like you said, you're telling me that a Palpabon, Lou, Monaco booth wouldn't make you more excited to get there for first pitch? Where right now it's kind of like, Mm, I kind of got to take a shower. I can jump in in the second. Yeah. 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 It almost feels like if you miss a big moment in the game, like, you know, you get like the MLB app notification that like Devers hit a homer. You're almost like, oh, I missed the fun part. Oh, exactly how I feel. That's exactly mm -hmm. right. And the thing about someone like Papelbon or Eckersley they can fill the worst on-field moments. They can make, uh, you know, a sixth inning. There hasn't been a run scored drought in a five-game losing streak where they're so as upset as we are that mm -hmm. it becomes entertaining because of who they are. Yeah. And you just want to, like, commiserate. You want to be like, dude, mm -hmm. I feel the same way. I think that's why people listen to this show right now. You know, people hear us getting upset about it, and they're like, thank you. I feel justified oh, we so in feeling the way that today. I feel. Yeah, right. Well, yes, aside from today, because we've been oh so positive today. But like you want to hear that. You want to hear like, I'm not a crazy person. This is mm -hmm. this is not good, right? 
and and there's like bad I don't know, for Joey's adds, it builds some trust. I, I, it um, seemed like he like was in the middle of like a really good the take. person that you're watching. And oh, when here we go, what you cut out for like 15 seconds. Oh, uh, it just builds a level of trust with the, you and the person that you're watching. The person you're inviting into your living room, 162 yeah. times a year. Yeah. <sighs> And it's like I I'd used rather to be... watch a game with Pap than 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 Ob. Not that that's a one for one trade, but right, you know. I don't know if I want Pap doing play by play. I'll say that I don't think I want that. Let's see how many I that meter would depend massively on how many games back we are under five hundred. You're ten games yeah. under five hundred. Give me Pap in the first chair. If we're it's actually watching that... a real game that matters, absolutely not. Kind of weird that Dave O'Brien can't just like call in sick to his job. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. he can't like take a weekend vacation or like, you know, I feel feeling like under the weather sp- today. Like you just got to go. You got to do it. Cause like, what are they going to do? Who are they going to put in there? Well, they like Monaco did do that in that kind of capacity in years past, but this year it, it really hasn't. It has been the OB yeah. show all year. Yeah. Couple of, a uh, couple of Apple TV games, a mm-hmm. Roku game. Yeah, Sunday night baseball. Wouldn't mind if Ob went on a cruise. Wouldn't hate it. Wouldn't mind it. I heard June's a good. Take time a for vacation, that. bro. You work way too hard. Yeah, you work way too neutral. You're doing too much. Get You're out doing of here. Yeah. Take a cruise. Why don't you? you it's that hundred day cruise. Did you see that? Maybe. The hundred hundred day oh. carnival cruise. Don't tell Steve about that. He'll be Mott's. Don't tell him. He'll be on that tomorrow. Big cruise guy? Oh, one of the biggest. He seems like a cruise guy. That seems like yeah. a that seems like an insult. That seems like a really it big is. insult to say to somebody out of context. To be like, you seem like mm-hmm. you'd really like a cruise. He's been Isn't on it? maybe seven. Like, he's close to double That's digits. Insane. That's insane. Yeah, it's a lot. Most people go on two cruises in their life. His Seven's parents insane. are on... His parents are on one actively, and the only reason he's not is because at a certain age they decided you have to pay too. Well, that's bullshit. I'm mad for him. If you go on a cruise, you should bring everybody you know. You should go on a cruise, dude. You should bring everybody you know. Me? Yeah. You don't. I actually. Wait, are you trying to get me off the show? Are you trying to OB me right no, now? No, I'm trying to get me onto a cruise. Oh, okay. That makes more acceptable. Um, actually. June 14th, I believe it is, uh, a bunch of my friends from home are going on a cruise, and they've been and trying wh- to get me to go where are we going? Year. They are going Boston to Bermuda, I believe. Seven days. I love I Bermuda. Do you? I've never been. I'll tell them to send pics. Oh, my God. All right, I, just got a, I got a new bathing suit, like, last week. Really? I haven't busted it out yet. Yeah, what would yeah, be... yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's crazy. It's too bad you don't have an opportunity to like coming up or anything uh, and you won't have one um june 14th we... i can clear my schedule no well it'd be the 14th like 21st i think it's fine ish what uh what would we do with this program like would we have if we're both gone, itm at c dude can't even post it i don't think actually i think you could pay for wi-fi maybe we could that would be an electric dude, itm on deck oh it's like a zach and cody spinoff and it's a baseball reference and it's a boat. Oh, reference. I didn't, even, didn't Dude, even think about that. Think about that. ITM on deck. We need it. You know what's crazy about the world these days is that if we did do a show with that premise and we had maybe a graphic specifically that said on deck, I could mm-hmm. write it off. Let's do it. Like it's so easy to do that, to just be like, this is a Are you saying a are you saying we need to take a business trip, bro? To Bermuda? I mean, it, yeah, I guess. I don't know how we would watch the games, but yeah, I mean, we'll figure that F- part out. Phone. You have like 150 minutes of Wi-Fi, I believe, a day. No way. That's There's no way that's That's true. a there's package. That- that's a real package. I don't know if there is like an unlimited Wi-Fi thing. Also, I'm pretty sure uh steve's mom told me that there was a there was like a like a cafe like a laptop cafe like a cafe type thing that has wi-fi that you could do on the cruise but you don't get wi-fi unless you like pay premium for it i don't know how much it costs five there things are like to know about internet use on board a cruise let's do this 
We'll never be as fast or reliable as at home. Sure. Of course. It's getting much faster. We wouldn't even need good Wi-Fi, though. We just need to upload. It could take three hours. Like, we would be yeah. next to each other, so. Oh, Carnival Cruise Wi-Fi is fast enough to support Netflix. Maybe Carnival is who we call. Could it Could it support Nessun 360, though? Royal Caribbean no. claims Voom is the fastest and best Wi-Fi option on cruise ships today. But, like, so, yeah, we have to figure out a, a plan there. Do you want to go on a cruise with a bunch of my high school friends? I want to go on a cruise. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's go. All right, there we go. It's decided. ITM on deck. Coming to you soon. Thank you, Scott. You made it sound like uh, I'm paying for the whole thing. Oh, my God, dude. Are you seriously offering that? You can't do that. Don't no, do that. Oh no, I didn't. No, I didn't. Thank You're you, right. Scott. Let's get a bunch of thank you, Scotts, on Twitter, on in the ITM DMs. Maybe we'll do DMs next show. Uh, we could use some of those, but a bunch of That's thank you, Scott, idea. DMs would be great. A bunch of thank you, Scotts, in the replies. Um, just very gracious of him to offer to do this for us. Well, what do you mean uh, us? For us. For the sake oh, of the show, man. you can write it off, dude. It's a fucking business expense. It's. I think people's understanding of write-offs is skewed. A well, write-off you made is it essentially sound pretty good a minute ago. A, a write-off is essentially a thirty percent off discount. But you there still have to spend a lot of money to make that. It's not, that and you much have to make a lot scheme. of money. Think of all the think of all the the hours of fun that you're that you're paying for with your good friend Joe. We'll see it. you guys after this brave series. Uh, two Can gamer do DMs next week. Yeah, let's do DMs next week. Let's do it. I'm just we've never um, I've never done that. I think it'd be interesting. Yeah, we should definitely. Everyone do it. does. We'll them, open the DMs. But I'm just curious to see how many we would get. Yeah, let's do it. All right, DMs are open. Slide on in there now. We'll post the graphic and uh, ask for some on there. But if you guys are here in this first, if you guys made it to the end of the episode, you guys, you guys, fucking. You slide take in priority. there first. We'll make sure you guys get in there. You guys take priority. We love you guys. Three days old takes. Find us on the socials at ITM underscore pod. You can follow me at Joey Capone. You can follow him at Scott Neville 46, like Jacoby Ellsbury. Like uh, who else? Brad Keller. Brad Keller. How could I possibly forget? Uh, we will be back after this thrilling two gamer at Fenway Pack against the Atlanta Braves. For Scott Neville, I'm Joey Capone. Go Sox, kid. Mm -hmm.